Hi, welcome back to 17 square meters garden. Today we are going to talk about hydrangeas. Hydrangeas are so common, especially hydrangea macrophylla. You can buy it even at the grocery store. But at the same time, I find them to be one of the most tricky, one of the most challenging plants to grow in pots. So today I want to share with you a few tips on how to grow them successfully in containers and to focus especially on why your hydrangeas are not blooming. There are about 23 hydrangea species and out of those 23 species we can talk about five different types of hydrangeas that are most commonly grown by gardeners. And it's really important that you know what type of hydrangea you have because not every hydrangea requires the same maintenance, not every hydrangea will be pruned the same way and not every hydrangea is suitable for a balcony garden. So let's talk about those five types of hydrangea to help you identify your plant better and also to point out some differences between these types. First type of hydrangea is hydrangea arborescence, which is also called wild hydrangea. They are great for a full shade situation or for a part shade situation. They produce massive, big, white blooms. Um, some cultivars produce pink blooms as well, but most of the time you will see them as a very rounded, big, white blooms. Some common cultivars um, are Annabelle, Invincible or Incredible. Next is Hydrangea petiolaris, which is a climbing hydrangea. I see a lot of balcony gardeners buy this plant, although it's a very, very large vine. So do keep that in mind that at some point it may become too large for your balcony. It's a great plant for a shady garden, especially if you have a real garden. So if you were to grow it on the north facing wall of your house, that would be perfect situation. But on, in a balcony garden situation, it can become a little bit too large after a few years. Also, they are sold as very young plants usually. So you may need to wait two, three years before the plant establishes and before it becomes a little bit more mature. And only then it will start to produce flowers. Third type of hydrangea is hydrangea macrophylla, which is this one. And it's the one that poses the most problems. They are divided based on this, the shape of their blooms. So as you can see here, we have so-called mop head hydrangea because the blooms are really rounded and really full. There's also hydrangea serrata, which is a mountain type of hydrangea, which I have just in the back. Uh, as you can see, the flower head is a little bit more flat with sterile flowers all around and small fertile flowers in the center. And very similar to this one, also with a very flat inflorescence, is Hydrangea macrophylla normalis. Although mop head hydrangeas, I noticed, they grow fairly slow in pots. But for example, mountain hydrangea, as you can see, it grows really, really rapidly and it gets really, really large. So pay attention to the size of the plant at maturity when you buy them because um, it can get a little bit too large if you buy a full-size hydrangea. There are some smaller cultivars, so if you have a small balcony garden, definitely pay attention to what is written on the plant tag and choose some smaller cultivar that you will be able to enjoy for many years. The fourth type of hydrangea is Hydrangea paniculata, which I have here. Hydrangea paniculata, as the name says, it has a panicle shape blooms. I can show you right now because they bloom a little bit later in the season, mid-summer, and as you can see, it just now starts to produce flower buds. This type of hydrangea is probably the easiest. Um, no matter what you do with it, how you prune it or however you take care of it, most likely it's gonna bloom. So definitely if you want to start with hydrangea, start with hydrangea paniculata. But here also pay attention to the size at maturity because there are some really large cultivars. But for balcony gardens, there are some dwarf cultivars. For example, here I have a limelight. There's also bob hydrangea. There is hydrangea pole star. So these are some of the smaller cultivars that are more suitable for balcony and for container gardens. One thing about Hydrangea paniculata is that it would prefer a little bit more sunny location. So as I said, the Hydrangea arborescence and Hydrangea macrophylla, they can be grown in full shade or in part shade, but Hydrangea paniculata would not necessarily thrive in a full shade situation. So if you have a more sunny location, this will be perfect. The last hydrangea is Hydrangea quercifolia, which is an oak leaf hydrangea. So as the name says, it has leaves that resemble those of an oak tree and blooms resemble those of Hydrangea paniculata. But do not make mistake between these two because they are completely different species that need to be maintained different way. But Hydrangea quercifolia also enjoys a little bit more sunny location. Okay, so now that we know those five Hydrangea types, we can divide them into those that bloom on new wood and those that bloom on old wood. And that's the most important information because Based on that, you will know how to prune your hydrangea properly. So what does it mean that a hydrangea blooms on new wood versus 
on old wood. So as you can see here, I have my hydrangea paniculata and both hydrangea paniculata and hydrangea arborescens bloom on new wood. So what does it mean? As you can see, this year, in spring, it produces new branches, it produces new stems, and on these new stems, as you can see here, it's gonna produce its blooms. So hydrangea arborescence, you can cut it all the way to the ground, you can cut it either in fall or in spring, as you prefer. With hydrangea paniculata, you would want to leave a little bit of those um, woody stems, so you, cut, you would cut it back by about half or two-thirds, depending on the size of your plant. And in spring, it's just gonna uh, leaf out, it's gonna produce new shoots, uh, new branches, and on these branches, it's gonna bloom. On the contrary, hydrangea macrophylla, hydrangea quercifolia, and hydrangea petiolaris bloom on old wood. So what does it mean is that they produce their flower heads on the wood, so on the branches, from last year. So in spring, this plant wakes up and it wants immediately to bloom. It's not gonna produce new fresh growth like this one. It's just gonna wake up, it's gonna leaf out and it's gonna bloom. So if you cut back this type of hydrangea in fall, especially hydrangea macrophylla, because a lot of hydrangea macrophyllas, they only produce their flower buds on apical buds, on terminal buds. So it means that if you cut those terminal buds off in fall or in spring, you are cutting off potential blooms. 99% of the times when someone contacts me and tells me, hey, my hydrangea are not blooming, do you know the reason why? Usually it's hydrangea macrophylla that has been pruned in fall or in spring. So if you do it, you cut off potential blooms and it's never gonna bloom for you. So one advice here, if you don't know what type of hydrangea you have, better leave it unpruned. No plant has ever suffered from being unpruned for a season or two. Because when you don't prune it, you risk nothing. If, for whatever reason, you have to do it, you have a very, very short window. So you have to prune it immediately after it's done blooming. So that's uh, mid-summer. If you prune it in fall or in spring, um, you are cutting off potential blooms. So now that you know how to prune or not prune your hydrangea, let's talk about some other possibilities why your hydrangeas are not blooming. Usually the number two reason is due to inconsistent watering and inconsistent feeding. Hydrangeas are thirsty and they are hungry plants. And as long as when they are planted in ground, they can spread their roots in search for water and nutrients, they can do it in pot. They live in a restricted environment and they only have as much as you give them. So you have to water them really, really often and abundantly. Hydrangeas do not like to be dry. They like the soil to be constantly moist. And in summer, you will probably need to water your plants every single day. Secondly, you have to feed your hydrangeas. Because they put on such a beautiful show, they need to have energy in order to do it. Just like humans, we need to feed ourselves well to be able to perform well, to have energy. It's the same for plants. They need nutrients in order to bloom so abundantly and to perform so beautifully and so healthy. So when you grow them in pots, I suggest that you use liquid feed. I think that's the most convenient way of fertilizing your hydrangeas. I'm fertilizing my hydrangeas from the moment when I see um, flower buds appearing. And I give them Alga Bloom, which is an organic seaweed fertilizer. It's a compound NPK fertilizer for flowering plants. And I give them this fertilizer about once a week. Another thing that I give to my plants is this additive green sensation. It's potassium and phosphorus based additive. So it's like an additional booster that improves soil, it improves plants resistance, and it also promotes abundant flowering. Okay, and a few last words about uh, maintenance and repotting. Uh, I repot my hydrangeas probably every two, three years. So people often ask me what is the size of the pots of my hydrangeas or other plants and I must say I first of all I never really pay attention to the actual size of the pot. I judge everything by eye. I look at the size of the plant and I consider its maturity and based on this I, um, I choose a pot. So when you bring a plant from the garden center check what is the size of the container that it's in and repot it into a pot a si one size or two sizes bigger. If you chose a dwarf variety at some point you will not need to repot it. Like it's only with the plants that continue to grow. Like for example, my hydrangea serrata and my hydrangea macrophylla, they are quite large uh, cultivars. So I'm repotting them into increasingly bigger pots. But for example, my hydrangea limelight, uh, which is a dwarf variety, it's in its final pot. I'm not gonna repot it into any bigger pot because it reaches certain mature size and it's then not gonna uh, keep growing. So you don't have to repot it into bigger and bigger pot. 
As for soil, I'm planting all of my hydrangeas in a universal potting mix, the same that I use for other plants. Um, they do prefer their soil to be slightly acidic, but uh, in my opinion, it's better to buy a good quality universal potting mix rather than to buy a poor quality ericaceous potting mix. Of course, if you can find a good quality ericaceous potting mix, so a potting mix that is suitable for plants that like acidic soil, then go ahead and plant your hydrangeas in an ericaceous compost. Uh, but you can plant them in universal potting mix as well and they will do perfectly fine. Hydrangeas are very winter hardy plants, so theoretically you don't have to protect them uh, from frost, but be very careful in, if you live in a cold climate. In spring, when the temperatures start to warm up, your hydrangeas start to wake up, and then if a sudden frost comes, it can damage your plants, especially hydrangea macrophylla. As we said, they bloom on old wood, so if they start to produce their buds and then a sudden frost comes in and um, it damages the buds, then your hydrangea may not flower that year. Okay, so that's it for today's video. I hope that you learned some useful tips on how to grow hydrangeas in pots. Thank you for joining me and I'll see you again in the next video. Bye!